What's up guys, today I'm gonna to compare piggyback tunes to flash tunes or ECU tunes and I'm gonna answer these basic questions. What do they do? What are the differences between the two? What are the pros and cons of each? Which one is safer? Will the dealership know if you've been using them? Can you use them both at the same time? And will flash tunes eventually replace piggyback tunes? I own a BMW and most of my experiences with BMW, so I'm mostly gonna reference Burger Motorsports tunes, uh, boot mode, and MHD, but that doesn't mean that what I talk about isn't gonna relate to other cars or other tunes. I have experience with both piggyback tunes and flash tunes. I started out with the Burger Motorsports Stage 1 tune and eventually switched over to boot mode, which is what I'm running right now. The purpose of both the piggyback tune and a flash tune is to have your car make more power by adjusting things like ignition timing, fueling, or other parameters. Both piggyback tunes and flash tunes are capable of running multiple different maps, although my BMS Stage 1 tune could only run one map, but that's because it was the cheap one. If I had gotten the more advanced one like JB4, you can run different maps on it. Performance on both the piggyback tunes and the flash tunes are going to be about the same on your basic stage one, stage two maps. Tuning is going to be more effective on turbo cars and on naturally aspirated cars because the easiest way to get more power is to increase boost. Piggyback tunes are plug and play. So you plug them into some sensors and then they remain plugged in while you're using the tune. Uh, my stage one tune was plugged into the map sensor and the T-map sensor and then I zip tied it to one of the corners of the engine bay. JB4 and Dynatronics are more advanced tunes so you got more wiring to do. You get an app that you can use with the tune and you can make map changes on the fly. These tunes don't actually reprogram the ECU software. What they do is use the sensors to send signals to the ECU and these signals trick the ECU into thinking that it's making less boost than it really is. So the ECU compensates for this by adjusting the boost target to be higher and then your car ends up making more power. So maybe your car is making six PSI of boost well, the tune might lie to the ECU and tell it we're only making four PSI, so then the ECU will adjust and add an additional two PSI. JB4 is the most popular piggyback tune on 335Is. Unlike the piggyback tune, the flash tune is actually updating the software on the ECU. And because of this, it's able to hit a lot more parameters than the piggyback tune. Flash tunes used to require you to remove the ECU or DME, flash it, and then put it back into your car. Now you just need a flash tool paired with a smartphone or tablet, or just a laptop with an ENET cable, which you plug into the OBD, install the flash, unplug it, and you're done. Nothing remains plugged in after the flash is installed. Boot mode and MHD are the most popular flash tunes for the F30 BMW. So both piggyback tunes and flash tunes use the ECU to modify certain parameters to make more power. Both are capable of running different maps like stage one, stage two, A85, and others. Piggyback tune plugs in and remains plugged in while you're using the tune. Flash tune plugs in, modifies the software, and then unplugs. Piggyback tune uses sensors to trick the ECU into behaving differently and making more power without actually modifying the ECU software while Flash Tune does actually modify the ECU software. The Flash Tune is going to hit more parameters, which is going to allow the car to drive smoother and give it a more linear power band. Flash Tunes are quicker and easier to install and remove. The first time I flashed my car with boot mode, it took me less than five minutes to unlock the DME and install the Flash. And if I want to bring the car back to stock, it's going to take me less than five minutes to remove the flash and relock the DME. Flash tunes allow for more customization, like I can mess with the burbles and a bunch of other settings. And with boot mode, it even gives me the option to flash the transmission. Custom tuners are very easy to find. And now some of the negatives with flash tunes. Uh, boot mode and MHD don't have this issue, but I know there are certain flash tunes that require you to go into a shop and have it done by them. I think APR for Audi and Volkswagen is one of these tunes. In some rare cases, flash tunes can brick your ECU and this can be really expensive to fix or replace. 
Flash tunes are also easier to trace since you are actually modifying the ECU. Flash tunes tend to cost more. Map changes can't be done on the fly, they require reflashing the car. Piggyback tunes are less detectable since they don't modify the ECU. Piggyback tunes tend to be cheaper than ECU tunes. Piggyback tunes like JB4 allow you to make map changes on the fly just using controls on your steering column or steering wheel. Now let's talk about the cons of piggyback tunes. So they take longer and are more work to install. I had to disconnect the negative battery terminal and unplug and plug in a bunch of sensors and then I had to leave the tune sitting in the engine bay while running it. Since piggyback tunes don't actually modify the ECU, you're not gonna have control over as many parameters, so the car might not run as smoothly as it would with the flash tune. Can you remove the tune and then go to the dealer and have the dealer not find out that the car was ever tuned in the first place? Uh, there's a lot of disagreement on this topic. A lot of piggyback tunes say they don't leave any trace, but piggyback tunes are increasing boost, and when you increase boost, the car sometimes might log that, and the dealership might look into those logs and find out. So piggyback tunes aren't 100% undetectable. And the same thing goes for the flash tunes. But in most cases, the dealership isn't going to look into it. I've ran a tune, then removed the tune, gone to the dealership, had them do a full inspection on my car, and they never mentioned anything about a tune being on my car. But I'm sure if I had a serious issue, like a blown motor, they would have looked a lot deeper and eventually they would have figured it out and denied a warranty claim. And I have seen posts on the BMW forums where somebody flashed their car and then had an error code pop up that had something to do with DME tampering. Although I think boot mode has sorted out that error at this point. So you're never going to be 100% safe when it comes to dealer visits and avoiding your warranty claims being denied. I have heard stories about people tuning their F80 BMW M3s, having the crank hub spin and basically blow up their engine. And in some cases the dealership still repaired it. In other cases they just got their warranty claim denied. But this is a more extreme example. Most cases aren't gonna be like this. And it's up to you to look into the risks and either accept it or just don't tune your car. Since piggyback tunes aren't modifying the ECU software, the ECU will still retain its safety systems. And some piggyback tunes add additional safety systems like JB4 adds safety checks to make sure your car doesn't run lean. Flash tunes change more parameters so they can be more efficient and safe, but they can also push the car to its limits and be less safe. It really depends on what kind of tune is installed. Not all tunes are the same, so the answer to the question, which type of tune is safer, doesn't really have a clear answer. I started out with the piggyback tune and then switched over to a flash tune and after experiencing the flash tune, I don't think I'm ever going to leave it and go back to just a piggyback tune. The power delivery and smoothness I got with the boot mode off the shelf tune is just so much better than what I got with the piggyback tune and I really think it's what the car should have came like stock. And if you check Beamer post, the flash tunes like MHD and boot mode are very quickly becoming more popular on these newer BMWs but there are still a lot of high power 335i's that are using JB4. And flash tunes can take a long time to be released sometimes because the manufacturers are making it tougher to crack into the ECU. So because of this, I don't see piggyback tunes going away anytime soon, but I do think they're gonna lose a lot of market share to flash tunes. You can run both a piggyback tune and a flash tune at the same time, the term for this is called stacking. You can run JB4 and then either use boot mode or MHD running a special map called a backend flash. So then you get the benefits of both the piggyback tune and the flash tune. This way you can retain JB4's advanced safety systems, uh, JB4's ability to control things like boost and meth injection, JB4's data logging, and JB4's ability to change maps on the fly. 
Some people recommend running JB4 if you run a flash tune and other people say you only need it if you're gonna do like meth injection or something. But like everything in the card community, there is a lot of disagreement. But anyway, these are the basic differences between flash tunes and piggyback tunes. There are obviously a lot of different tunes available and each come with their own capabilities and features. I prefer flash tunes, so I'm gonna stick with boot mode and I think they're only gonna get better as time goes on and more updates come out. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I missed any key differences between the two and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.